Good afternoon. My name is Chef Thompson uh, here at the Culinary School of Fort Worth. And this afternoon, we'd like to talk about some seafood. We've got several different types of uh, crustaceans here, some soft shell crabs, some oysters, some mussels, some clams. What I want to do is describe the differences and uh, maybe prepare a couple of dishes for everybody to, to watch. So first, we want to start with our mussels. We're going to make a little uh, dish called drunken mussels. But uh, we have Prince Edward Island mussels today, and mussels are a, uh, a bivalve that likes to attach to things. So when you buy fresh mussels, you want to make sure that they're nice and clean, and it may be hard to see, but the mussels have this little beard, which um, I like to describe as culinary dental floss. It's a little bit tough, so we want to make sure we pull that beard off and we prepare these mussels so that they are edible. That was a little tough. Okay, so we're gonna go through these. We're gonna check them to make sure they're clean, that they do not have a beard attached. We also wanna make sure that they're closed. If you have a muscle that is not closed, that means that it is either asleep or it's dead. Uh, we don't wanna to try to cook a muscle that we already know is dead because it will just contaminate the rest of our dish. So I'm checking each one of these for a beard and make sure that it's closed before we start our, our dish. These seem to be pretty clean, so we can go through this fairly quick. Uh, these are nice and fresh, so we have mostly uh, survivors in here. Nobody appears to be gone. The other thing you need to watch for once you have finished cooking the dish is if you have a muscle that uh, does not open during cooking, that also means that the muscle is dead. So we want to watch for two things. It's closed when we cook it, and that it's open when it's cooked, finished cooking. We'll do a few more of these, and then we'll get started on our drunken mussel dish. Now this mussel, um, you can't really see it, but it's got some jagged edges around the, the lip of the shell. Um, so it's open to the air. I'm just going to set that one aside. I don't want to take a chance of, um, and this one's broken. <clears throat> we'll call those out so that we don't destroy our dish by putting uh, bad seafood in it. A few more. Now what we want to do is we're going to start to prepare this dish called drunken mussels. The reason it's called drunken mussels is it uh, has wine in it. There's not going to be any alcohol left in the dish when we finished cooking it, so it's not like um, it's going to be hazardous for you to eat and then dry. Okay, we're going to go with that little bit. Um, what we're going to do is get our fire going here, get a little heat under our pot, and we want to be real careful when we start. We're going to add just a little bit of canola oil to our pot. <clears throat> and then our first ingredient is going to be our garlic. Now, garlic burns real easily, so we want to keep a real close eye on that, that we don't burn the garlic, because that would just ruin the taste of the entire dish. Let our garlic go for a little bit, and. Uh, while this is cooking, what I'd like to do, though, is move to our next uh, seafood. I want to get a couple of these out while that cooks. And what we have today is some Blue Point oysters and some Salvation oysters. The Blue Point oyster comes from the northeast, and the Salvation oyster comes from the northwest. So they're similar in structure but different in appearance. Both of them have a bold bottom, and this would be where the liquor um, is, and also where the oyster is. This one more of a bold bottom and flat top, so the oyster is living in that bold bottom. Now I hear my garlic going over here. It's browning up just a little bit. So what I want to do is add my lemon zest, if you can hear that lemon zest, it's getting hot quick. We're going to stop the cooking process. We're going to hit that with a little white wine. Mm. A little bit more because our next 
thing going in there is just a dash of red pepper flake. If you like it spicy, add a little more. If you don't like it that spicy, add a little bit less. Now we have our clean oysters, and we're going to put our clean oysters in this pot. We're going to cover it and just keep an eye on it so when it starts boiling, we'll turn the temperature down and let it steam in there. We don't want to get it too hot. Uh, but the last thing we'll do is add the uh, parsley, give it a little toss, and then we'll be ready to plate it when all the mussels have opened. <clears throat> so let's go back and look at our oysters again. When you're shucking an oyster, if we can look at this real close, you'll notice that this lip, this is where it opens, but there's not an, a slit anywhere. It doesn't look like there's anywhere to penetrate it. If you look on the back side, we have a natural hinge right there. That hinge is going to be what we use to pry the oyster open. So in order to be safe, I'm gonna use this side towel to hold my oyster in place. And that way, if I slip, I go into the towel and not into the uh, hand. I have a couple of different kinds of oyster knives here. Uh, thinner blade, thicker blade, but they're all pretty much the same a very, very stiff, hard blade. This one has a little bit of a bend to it so that you get a little more prying action with it. So we'll start out with this um, inexpensive, you can buy these anywhere, even including your uh, sport, sporting goods store. But what we want to do is in that little area that we saw, the hinge, we're going to get our shucker, shucking knife in there and we're gonna work it down in there until it feels nice and stable. And then we're gonna give it a twist. Another twist, a little pry, and the oyster is now open, okay? Now the oyster is attached to the top and the bottom of the shell. Twist that so you can see that a little better. It's attached to the top and the bottom of the shell with a muscle known as an abductor muscle. So what we wanna do is run our oyster knife across the top and not cut the oyster, but cut the abductor muscle. <clears throat> so now we have the top off. Our oyster is here. The abductor muscle is right there. But what we want to do is we want to cut that abductor muscle on the bottom. We don't want to lose our juice. So now we have a, a free oyster shucked and ready to eat. Now another example of the oyster, same construction, has that tight lip on the front and it has that little hinged opening in the back. So what we wanna do is we wanna get our oyster knife in there. <clears throat> it's a little different as far as its appearance. So we're gonna get our oyster knife in that little area where the hinge is. Oop, and we're gonna pry it open. That one popped open pretty easily. So let's twist this. We're gonna run this across the top, cut the abductor muscle, not cut the oyster. And then in the bottom here, we have our oyster. We'll cut the abductor muscle. And there we have another free oyster. So, this can go on for days if you've gone out and seen Oyster Bar. They have a shucker that will shuck hundreds of these in an hour. Uh, so these can be used either eaten raw, they can be cooked. Oysters Rockefeller is a very popular uh, dish that's made in New Orleans. And uh, <clears throat> it's where it got its, its start is in New Orleans at Antoine's. Uh, now let's move on. We're not steaming yet. Turn that up just a little bit. Let's move on to a different uh, type of uh, clam here. We did our oysters, and now we want to take a look at a clam. And you'll notice the clam is built pretty much the same way. There's nothing in front where you can actually find an opening that you can get in. And in the back, there's really nothing that you can find here where you can get in. There's not that hinge. So the oyster knife actually is built a little different. It has a solid back and a sharp front. So the sharp front is meant to find a little bit of a area in the front of that oyster 
just slide the knife in and then what we're going to do, put the knife back in there, we're going to slide across the top, cut the abductor muscles on the clam and pop it open. So if you can see in here, you'll notice that the clam actually has two abductor muscles, one on each side. So when we open the clam up, we need to make sure that we come in here and we get both of those abductor muscles to free the clam up and have a nice clam to use in whatever dish we're making. Okay, so there's our nice fresh clam. Okay, let me clean my board a little bit. Check my drunken muscles. There we go. My fire had gone out on my muscles. <clears throat> So we have one last uh, dish that we're going to look at today, and that is a soft shell crab. The soft shell crab has a very, very um, short uh, lifespan in that the crab molts its shell, and 24 hours later it starts to reform a new shell. So the uh, fishermen that go out and harvest soft shell crab uh, have a very short time to do that. Now this crab, if it were fresh, would have two eyes and a face here. When they dispatch the crab, they cut that off, which kills the crab instantly. And then they come in here, and under each side, they have gills. The gills on these have already been removed on either side. So this is clean. This is actually ready to eat. Now, soft shell crab can be used uh, in different ways. We'll see soft shell crab po'boys. We'll see soft shell crab just served uh, straight up with maybe some rice and vegetables. Uh, but they are ready to eat without removing any other uh, appendages other than the, the face, the eyes, which kills it, and the lungs. So what I've prepared for this one today is a little bit of a dusting. <clears throat> and what we would do with this, the soft shell crab uh, would get dusted in our cornmeal. This is just a seasoned cornmeal. There's a little bit of Old Bay seasoning, some salt, and we'll dust this and set it aside, let it rest a little bit. We've got another one over here, which we will dust and let it set aside and let some of that cornmeal bond to those soft shell crabs a little bit before we drop them in hot oil. What we'll do with these is we'll pan fry them in just a minute. Set this right over here. We're going to add our parsley to our mussels. Our mussels are open for the most part. We've got a nice broth going. I'm going to give that parsley just about a minute so that the parsley will cook through just a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and put it in the bowl here. So this would be drunken mussels. Be real careful, we've got a nice broth. <clears throat> we've got some beautiful mussels. We'll get just a little more garnish with the... Uh... So there's drunken mussels. Our next dish, which we're going to finish with, will be that soft shell crab. So I've got a nice saute pan here. I'm going to get the saute pan hot. We're going to put a little oil in the saute pan. Get the oil hot. Let that go for just a minute. Redrift my soft shell crabs again. Let's see what we've got. Our oil is just barely hot enough. Those will go ahead and fry in that hot oil. Could be a little bit hotter. 
and that will produce our soft shell crab. One trick that I learned when eating mussels was you can actually use the mussel itself as your implement to eat with. You use one mussel, pull the other mussel out of the shell, and it's delicious. And then we'll go back vice versa. We got our mussel out of the shell. Very good.